<clears throat> Are you ready? Congratulations to this episode's patron of the pod. Congratulations. Congratulations. Wait, I should say his name. James Ratcliffe. You are this episode's patron of the pod. Congratulations, James Ratcliffe. Whenever this podcast is played, you will be recognized for your excellence. That's right, Stacy. That's right, David. That's why we've made this personalized recording. And not only do you get to hear your name on the tips of our golden tongues, you also get a grand prize reward. Congratulations. That's right. This prestigious honor comes with dinner for two at the luxurious David's house. David's house. You will have a one-on-one dinner date with David Sapp himself. Isn't that right? Absolutely. I can't wait. David will provide two 40s, two Totino's pizzas. And he will eat anything you put in front of him. That's right, Chase. Absolutely anything. Right, David? Absolutely. He'll put it wherever. That's always a great time. And after dinner, he will prepare you baked goods of questionable quality. I heard him say, I don't know if I have all the ingredients, but I'm just going to wing it before you started making them. Right, David? Absolutely. Thanks for that input, David. I'm glad we're all uh, recording this at the same time. And I'm David. (laughs) You sure are. That's right, Chase. And after dinner, you will be treated to hunkering down under an unwashed blanket with David. Where you two will watch Orange County on DVD. Where he plays with your feet. That's right, Stacy. Which ultimately leads to whatever you want it to be. That's right. David is fair game for this date. He will put it anywhere. Anywhere. Oh, for sure. David is free for you to use as you please. David's dream dinner date comes free with access to David's lips and asshole. Stick it in his face. He doesn't mind. You can say that again. You want to slap him around? That's fine. You can say that again. You ever wondered if a bowling pin could fit up a grown man's ass? Hey, run those experiments. I completely consent. And this is not a pre-recorded message. This is not a pre-recorded message. So congratulations again to James Ratcliffe. And I'm David. Maybe next time David will show up. You know what time it is. It's the Jank Ass Podcast. It's so jank. Yeah. Hello and welcome back to the Jank, everybody. Hooray. Glad you could join us again. We. Hooray. I am one of your three hosts, David. Alongside me, we have Chase. Hello. And as always, Stacy. What's up? What up, dog? So, <laughs> <laughs> what up, so, homie? Anybody who's been paying attention on our Discord knows this is not our first attempt at this. This yeah. is actually <laughs> round two. We uh, recorded at least an hour's worth, and collectively we all just realized like there it wasn't landing. Like There was good stuff in there, but it was just really disjointed and... Not good listening, so we didn't want to put that out there for you. So we're we are praying to Satan that it works out this time. <laughs> we, I touched on it, I think, in the last episode. Um, I have a new job right now, which is a completely different field from what I was doing. And uh, holy shit, is it a lot of information to take in? I yeah, feel like I'm transitioning. Full on prostitute. Full on, pr- not even part time business. Like I'm, I'm my own hoe and my own pimp. Like I really <laughs> stepped it up. Is that where all those bruises came from? He's giving himself black eyes. <laughs> black eyes and like my left thigh is all messed up. My you know, I might my right hand's getting sore, so I'm gonna start switching lefty to right thigh. But I mean <laughs> you're so you're like, home. David, what'd you make today? And you're like, thirteen dollars. You're like, what'd you say, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Daddy. Don't say sorry, Daddy, to me. Pow, pow. Oh. I was gonna say your own hoe, your own pimp, and your own bottom bitch. <laughs> <laughs> The trifecta. That's the dream. This is this is why people get into hoeing, and I am on top. Well, and you're your worst performing bitch, so you you and the bottom bitch can make fun of that one. Well, yeah, you know. Oh, man. <laughs> I got to keep myself grounded. I mean, so much is going so well that I, I got to, you know, you got you, you to gotta retain your humility. You got to stay on the level. I can't be a cocky hoe. That's not good. 
So, David, you you had a story last time that uh, I cut you off and told you to fuck off. So, go ahead and go ahead and tell that story. Nah, nah. (laughs) It was a story. Nah. Hear that story. All right. (laughs) Got my beer. All right. Tell the story. Did you pull it out of your ass? (laughs) Oh, here's my beer. I'm going to have to wipe this off a bit here. Um, <laughs> yeah, you'll notice so, it was muffled when he opened it. <laughs> so I had a <laughs> so I had a relatively <laughs> scary experience. Um, hell, this was about a month ago, maybe a little bit more now. Um, as you all know, like I was working in retail, and when you're in retail, you can have a pretty hectic schedule, and there were some nights where I would be to work till like 11, 11.30 at night. I wouldn't get home till about midnight, so... Everything's shut down. Gotta sell them pants. Gotta sell those pants, man. And the occasional belt to hold them up. So it <laughs> it was one of those nights where I was there till like 11.30 and just a shitty day, as always. Like, shitty in retail. Um, I wasn't very discreet about it. Like, I hated my job. I hated what I was doing. Like, every day fucking sucked. In so retail? Yeah, believe it. Wow. It's, it's real life, man. Like so this dream. is... <laughs> Selling pants. <laughs> Just old people yelling at you, I've been shopping here for 20 years. We've only been here for 11. And I've never had the clothes do this before. Like, shut up. (laughs) It's your old body. (laughs) (laughs) You've aged poorly. You brought this on yourself. (laughs) You only make stuff for the skinny people now. No, that's not true at all. Shut up, old guy. My grandson looks fat in your clothing. (laughs) (laughs) And in your competitor's clothing. (laughs) (laughs) To be quite honest, he's a huge letdown. (laughs) But (laughs) do something about it, polo man. What what the fuck am I going to... Now, let me speak to your boss. God damn it. Yeah, now you're selling pants and you're a personal trainer. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right and lunges tubby ha <laughs> ha no uh so hate retail hate it so much and i'm i'm coming home from work one night and it's it's about midnight and like you know freeways are empty roads are empty nobody's out because everybody has real jobs and they are well past being asleep already so they can wake up at a respectable hour to go to their real job and have some self-respect as i'm coming home i turn the corner to my street and and there are, like, two squad cars directly in front of my house. And I'm like, what the fuck? is Like, they're parked, like, in my driveway and on the rocks, like, right in front of my house. So I'm a little scared. I'm like, what the fuck did Sicily do? Or worse, like, who the fuck got into Sicily? So, I, like, I'm pulling around the corner, and the neighbors who are directly across from me, like, if my back is to my front door, they're right across the street from me. Their, their pickup truck is in my next door neighbor's garage and they've got a like a new red dodge charger in the driveway it's just smashed the fuck up in their trucks in the garage so i'm like oh my god what the hell happened here and like i rolled down my window and they were out there and there was i asked them i was like is everything okay is everybody all right they're like yeah you know it's fine and the cops were like yeah no it's good we just had an incident here we come to find out like the guy's alibi was just like oh is the gas pedal just got stuck down while he was in reverse and the truck just careened into our neighbor's place. Now, the reason this is so scary is because I'm in a duplex, so I've got my house, there's a wall dividing my house and the other house, and it's just like a mirror of ours. Where their garage is, if they, like, the truck went back into the right and hit their garage. If their truck would have gone back into the left, it would have gone through the window into my bedroom, which our wall, our wall is against. They would have killed my wife, basically. So it was a terrible sight to come home to at or midnight. Or even better, at, it could have killed you. It sh- I mean, do you you know? Then you'd have a story. At that stage, <laughs> at that point in my life, with you know no prospects on the horizon for a new career and just being in the cesspool of just just hate that I had for the retail gig, like I would have walked been into so the mad. car. Well, yeah, <laughs> take me now, truck. <laughs> I could have started a GoFundMe and then ran off with the process, <coughs> profits. Ah, uh, but yeah, no, I, yeah, could have, could have like totally killed my wife. And thank God, like, I'm talking to everybody, and she just comes out the front door. She had no idea it even happened. Like, she slept through a truck, like hitting a car, bouncing off the car, and then destroying a garage. Ah, uh, and the the shitty part is too, like the people who lived across from us, and they they're not there anymore. Thank God, the people who lived there, they had zero insurance on the truck. 
And because of the type of accident it was, the insurance company for our neighbors, they only got the, their car got totaled and they only got a $600 payout on this car that they're still making payments on that got totaled, like completely fucked them. And our neighbors, too, who are now not there, they were like, oh, yeah, we're going to have a garage sale. We're going to try to raise the money for you. They never did that shit. They well, got I kicked out. because they're suing them. Well, no, like the lady just decided against it because they don't have insurance. They got kicked out of their house uh, by their landlords because they were back on payments. Like it would have cost her, you know, the money to try to get, you know, legal action behind it and try to take money from them that they probably didn't even have. So they are just like, you know what? Like it's fucking shitty. We're going to we're going to eat this one. And they are bigger people than I because I would have been out for blood. Like if they would have, you know, bounced off my car and wrecked my garage, they might have been dead. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, gotta so that some way to recover that you gotta you gotta get that lawyer, damn it. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know the ins and outs of these kind of processes, and I know they looked into it and they landed on this is probably just going to be the best course of action. This family's gone, by the way, too. Like nobody even knows. Like one day there's just a Cadillac that kept coming by and like picking up shit, and then they were just gone. And we've we've seen the landlords yeah, on well, a number of occasions. They recovered nothing, and then they faded away like Back to the Future. <laughs> Like, fuck this neighborhood. That's We're out of here. <laughs> In this dimension. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, they, they suck because they were, like, always yelling at each other and just causing noise. So I'm so happy they're gone. It's unfortunate my cool neighbors had to lose a car in the process. But they're gone. And then right next door to them, that shitty couple left, and now my wife's best friend lives there. And one place to the right of them, that shitty family moved out, too. My neighborhood is getting pretty fucking sweet right now. <laughs> because they're gone. Yeah, all the shitheads are gone. Like, this place is really turning around. Like, everybody now else was gone. You can drive cool. your car into their houses. I know. <laughs> yeah, I can drive out more people. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's great. And, you know, I, I had another similar experience. I'll keep this one short and sweet. But when we first moved into this place, one night when I was coming home from work, Cicely decided to surprise me by cooking us, like, a steak dinner. And, that you know, it's very sweet of her, and I love this concept. When I had moved here... The place that I moved from, uh, me and my roommate at the time had a few propane tanks, and I ended up getting one that was, like, way too old, and I didn't even realize it. When she went to light it, it was so old that flames started shooting out of the side of the propane tank, so she had to call the fire department. As I'm driving home from work, I turn down the exact same street, and I see a fire truck and an ambulance pulling away from my house. I'm like, what the fuck? So, like, I get in there, and, yeah, they they put out the propane tank, but... I've had, a, I've had a few instances where, like, I just turned the corner and I'm like, oh, shit, something went wrong. How so far good. apart were the in, these uh, instances? Hey, you got uh, a story where someone else tried to kill your wife and a story where you tried to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> Same story. Squad cars and lights and uh, it's scary. But no, these were these were a couple of years apart from each other. So, I mean, it wasn't okay. back to back or anything. That would have been wacky if it was. Yeah, Cops that's, again? That's, <laughs> again? <laughs> That was two nights ago. <laughs> Sizzly. <laughs> ah. So, uh, for anybody keeping score at home, there are two houses available in my neighborhood. That's right, Jankles. If you want to come live to the jank oftenest son of a bitch there ever was, come on down to Phoenix, Arizona. We got two suites. You could live across the street from me and across the street and down the side from me. Uh, <laughs> I got nothing. This isn't landing. <laughs> for one... I'm the jank oftenest. <laughs> and for two, your story is lies because I know there's always people out there at midnight because of meth. <laughs> well, this is the meth capital of everywhere, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it really is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I live by some methy trenches, that's for sure. But, Do you still uh, have billboards up out there where it's like people with brown teeth that are like smiling and... Looking like zombies. No, they, they, they gave up on that, actually. It, it actually started becoming heroin was the problem out here. I mean, meth is still around. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, meth kind of took a backseat to it. But uh, the high school, like where I worked, the mall I worked at, the closest high school to us was the number one location, like ground zero for like heroin in our state. Like there was a huge heroin problem there, and it was like the biggest concentration. It's like, oh, great. That's so good I work right next to this shithole. <laughs> what a lovely story. New topic. <laughs> <laughs> Move to Arizona. Heroin, meth, my neighbor. Out of control trucks. <laughs> <laughs> Out of control trucks. Huge payments on cars you don't even own anymore. Exploding propane tanks. <laughs> Pow! Quick ah! Slam! Crash! No, I don't have any meth on me, sir, or madam. 
Come to Phoenix. Did I mention we got a bunch of racist white folk? Come on down. New topic. Video games. Boy, I tell you, it is a great time to be a fan of video games right now. Am I right, Siddharth? It's a great time. It's a great time. It's a grand I, old time. I'm, I'm saying this specifically because uh, anybody who knows me and my video game history knows that I love the Burnout series. He and loves Burnout. Love it. And they just released Burnout Revenge, which is probably my favorite. They released it for backwards compatibility on Xbox. And for the last few days, I have been having such an amazing time playing this again. <laughs> Way to go, Chase. Yeah. Like I tell wonderful about time, contribution. Man. Full disclosure, everybody, too. I uh I almost on impulse bought a PlayStation 4 and God of War and I talked myself out of it, but instead I bought a 2DS XL and a couple of games. Because, you know, why not? And I also bought uh, Don't forget, Alien David, Isolation. if anyone out there has sixty dollars they would love to give to Chase. I want to play God of War, and I already have a PlayStation. So just donate directly to me. Uh, he you can, will show you his balls. You, and, and if you all have big yeah, enough whatever. hearts to, if you all have big enough hearts to donate four hundred and sixty dollars no, no, to me, forget that. So I can have the this PlayStation Four Pro and God of War, so I can rub it in Chase's face that uh, you all. I don't have a War. Pro. Well, I know that's why I want to get the Pro. I want to rub it in your face. Or you could donate three dollars to me, and I could get a blowjob from David. <laughs> That's uh, five bucks for you, Siddharth. Which we will film and put on the Patreon. <laughs> because you've all been demanding it. <laughs> we, we have heard, heard you, listeners. We have heard you. We have heard you, Josh come. Green. <laughs> when will David blow chase? <laughs> and, and we finally just said enough, Green. The blowjobs begin now. Uh, gross. That is disgusting. <laughs> it's weird what gets you beautiful. off, Josh. You Your beard <laughs> is tickling my balls. <laughs> That's why I grew it, Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> that's why I grew it, Daddy C. <laughs> so that's the video game segment. <laughs> that's what we've been playing. This but is no, what um, we call Boys Corner. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just a quick wrap up on it. Yeah, like I, I bought Alien Isolation, and I'm a few hours into that, and that's cool because they had it on sale for like ten bucks. So I was like, all right, I've always wanted to play this. Yeah, it's that's great. great. It's fucking boring. Get get into it, Chase. It definitely is a slow start, but then it gets a little bit more intense. So, like, now I'm digging it, but I might just give up on it because fucking burnout. I am so happy to have this again. Like, it is, it has been amazing. Shitty part is the servers are shut down, so I can't play it online, which I fucking loved. But, I mean, the single player is legit. Like, anybody with an Xbox, it's only 10 bucks right now. Pick it up, seriously. Like, if you like arcade racers, it's, it's ridiculously good value for your 10 bucks. But that's, There's that's no my online. Pitch. No, it's it was all like uh, I think it was dedicated servers hosted by Electronic Arts, and they're shut down right now. But I'm determined, damn it! I'm gonna petition. I'm gonna get them shits open because I used to play the hell out of that. There was a point I think I told you where I was actually ranked number fourteen out of everybody on Xbox Live. But then I lost a race and it shot back up to like a hundred something. But still, I, like I was all about that shit. I was on it all the time. I feel like I played Burnout on GameCube forever ago. Was that a thing? I think they, yeah, I, th I think, um, I think Burnout 3 was on there for sure. I want to say a buddy of mine had it. Maybe it was you? No. <laughs> <laughs> As we've call come full circle. Wait, no, no, a buddy of mine. It wasn't you. It was a buddy of mine. <laughs> that's, that's the inconsistency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't you. It, was a it wasn't some motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, I just did a quick look up on it. They absolutely released the first Burnout on there, so yeah, you might have played that one or some others too, but let's see. Burnout 3 GameCube, it did exist, yep. Oh, Burnout 3 not on GameCube, that's a shame, because Burnout 3 was sweet. But uh, yeah, anybody else have I anything to add to I played 3 very much, but I, I did think Revenge was, I never owned it, but I, I, I like rented Revenge and it was awesome. It's crazy too, because it was, you know, it's originally it was like a PlayStation 2, Xbox era game, they, like, up it and everything for the Xbox 360, so it's, you know, 13 years old based off of just, like, an Xbox game. It still looks fucking good and runs great. Like, I'm very happy. 
Yeah, plus I got an achievement for a vertical takedown on my first race because it glitched out. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Yeah, achievements. What do you, they what mean do you so much to me. What are you playing, Stacey? You got anything? Uh, nothing new. Nothing new? She's She's playing playing XCOM for the fucking 19th month in a row. <laughs> ah, shit. I need to... I need to re-download that because now they got the uh, like the enhancements for it, like the 4K and all that shit. So I need to, I want to take advantage of that. Oh, Mister Fancy Pants and your your fucking 4K bullshit. Just remember, patrons, you can <laughs> you have the opportunity <laughs> to send me 460 dollars so I can enjoy God of War in 4K as well. You My can send TV those donations from to- like 2009. <laughs> You know, I'm sure it does a competent job at making things look okay. <laughs> I it's see still a good TV. <laughs> this was a, a a thin TV when I bought it, and it's like a hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you know I can carry mine comfortably with one arm and uh, you know spin it around like a sign. It's pretty sweet. Uh-huh. Yeah. Plus, a uh, 4K resolution, bitch. Now I just sound like a I sound like an asshole. You are bragging, man. Ones. Yeah, I know. I, I sound like a dick. I I'm only like, have give that. me money. By the way, I have a sweet fucking TV. <laughs> the only reason I have it is because I got an awesome bonus at work that I didn't expect to get. So I was like, "Fuck it, this is out of my budget. Let's buy something I never would buy for myself regularly: 4K TV." Dick. I want one. <laughs> they uh, they're getting a lot more affordable. So like. Soon it won't cost much Not for you for to for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, if a uh, secret project that's still in the works, uh, you know, goes well. As Cha-ching. the world works, the chips are up for David and the chips are down for me. Just Listen, like when the chips are up for me, like it's bad news for David. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the upswing right now and it is well deserved. <laughs> it was bad for so long. I didn't I do like, anything. <laughs> I don't deserve this. <laughs> I just I want like a side course. by side of how positive you are about your new job now compared to retail around Christmas time. Oh man, if you could take a picture of my like stationary face between now and then, I'd probably look like ten years older. I might have gray hair. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> you're hunched for some reason. Yeah, yeah my all posture is going all fucked. to work, and I'm like on my knees begging people, please, please give me a job. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> I go into my I go into my current job. I'm like, there's too much work to be done, but I'm getting paid. Hmm, <laughs> <sighs> that felt good. Times are bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Fuck you this got, you, podcast. You got you got the game you're working on. I mean, we got the we got that show that's still in the works. That I don't get paid until it comes out. Well, I know, but still, I mean, you know, set set your sights on the horizon, Sadar. The horizon is bad. New topic. This is so weird. <laughs> David's telling you to be positive. <laughs> Times have changed, man. I got revenge back in my life. I got a new gig. Like this is everything's coming up, David. Who are you getting revenge on? No, no, burnout. Burnout revenge. revenge. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Stacy. <laughs> Stick with us here. I'm making a joke. You guys don't get my humor. <laughs> <laughs> New topic. <laughs> New topic. Movie chat. So before going into this recording, Chase had uh, requested of me that I go see Avengers: Affinity War so we could talk about it during the podcast. All so, right. So let's have I, some Thanos chat. <laughs> what I did instead was I went and saw a quiet place with my wife. So we're not going to be able to talk about Avengers. You said you were going to see the movie. I, well, <laughs> here's the thing. I may or may not have uh, waited to the last minute to pick out my seats, and the only ones that were left were front row, very far left, and that's pretty shitty. But then A Quiet Place had every seat available, so I picked the best ones, and that's what I saw. You so, know, I have a, a poster of Thanos hanging above my bed. Are you serious? <laughs> I have, Stacy got it for me. Uh, I got it for him for Christmas. <laughs> that's awesome. To encourage me uh, to always be the villain. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's standing atop a hill over a crowd that's pumping their fists at him. <laughs> it reminds me to consolidate my power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's uplifting to look at minions. every morning. He puts his hand over his heart. 
Whenever he looks at it. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> and every time I have sex, I salute Thanos. <laughs> Every morning he says, good morning, father. <laughs> During his uh, sexual performance, he doesn't break eye contact with him once. <laughs> I have to keep pushing his head towards mine, like, stop. Like, hey, hey, down here. Hey. The, uh, the other day I said that I, I, I had dreams of Th- Thanos and that <laughs> and that I was uh, sliding down his... his <laughs> <laughs> sliding down his chin like a water slide. <laughs> and Stacy was like, oh my god, you came on his face? No. <laughs> like, I took it as you were saying that you, like, rode his face. <laughs> I was picturing, like, regular sized chase. <laughs> you made it sound like my cum was sliding down the cracks of his no, chin. No, <laughs> you, you are even, like, reading between the lines of, of the dirty thing You made it dirty. Thinking. Your your dream was dirty. Me you know and what? Thanos had a great time. <laughs> yeah, th- and he wonders why my assumptions are just graphic. He was like, f- "Come on, Chase, ride my <laughs> face." <laughs> <laughs> Hop on, cowboy. <laughs> I don't know how you could misconstrue that. You got some pretty fucked up dreams, Chase. Chin groove rides for free. You don't yeah. know Thanos like I do. But clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't have dreams like you. I I don't know if I've shared this on here before, but I have the worst dreams imaginable. Like really? I I oh I do the most mundane board. My dreams are me like sorting papers, doing my taxes, but without error. Like I just I do my taxes, or you know, like I'm walking to the grocery store. That's it. Like everybody I talk to has like wacky dreams and nightmares and shit, and I'm just doing regular day to day stuff. Like ugh. And you've never just, had like lucid dreams. They are so few and far between. Usually, I don't dream, or if I do, like I'm, you know, I'm reading a letter from Wells Fargo about my bank statement. Like that's yeah, and it's I'm not with you it's, there. I've, it's, I've had the same shit. I've fucking it's so it's so shitty when I have a lot of work to do the next day and I dream about working <laughs> and like I feel like accomplished by the end of the dream and then I wake up and I haven't done any work. <laughs> it's like ah oh, fuck. <laughs> It's it's such a bummer. That's heartbreaking. It's happened to me a bunch of times. I'm dreaming about was, Flash. What? Oh, Flash. I'm sorry. I was thinking like the Flash. I'm like, man, Thanos, Flash. What's going on here? <laughs> Marvel dreams, DC dreams. He's all across the board. Yeah. I have some pretty cool dreams sometimes, like lucid dreams that I wake up and I'm like, oh, I wanted to know what would happen. Sh- your Thanos dreams? No, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't have sexual dreams about Thanos like you do. We all do. I want to be ashamed. <laughs> this is a safe space. I used to have badass dreams when I was a kid, like dreams where I could like fly or at least like jump for really long distances. That's fucking gone. And I just trim hedges and <laughs> I check my emails at work. It's like, oh, geez, I got a promotion change to do. Well, better get to it. Alarm. Like. Everything sucks. Oh, did I pay that bill? Oh, I gotta check that. No, see, like, I'm not even alarmed in my dreams. It's like, well, now this has to be done. Like, it's... <laughs> there's, there's nothing of like conflict it's... going on here. Yeah, it's, it's not a nightmare. <laughs> like, I don't wake up and go, oh, thank God, it was just a dream. I either have shitty dreams like that or else, like, I'm in a, a white room in a party of people and I accidentally shit on the white couch or something. and like <laughs> What? What? <laughs> What did you do? <laughs> I want that dream. I'm like, I, I want... swear, I wore pants when I got here, but <laughs> I can't find them now. I, I wore pants and I sat down on the black couch. I don't know what happened. And then it's like three hours of me scrubbing the couch. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just eating hors d'oeuvres and looking at you with a just disgust. Like, oh, that's not a bitch. It's like, you guys don't have to watch. <laughs> <laughs> There's, we're in a giant warehouse. You can move. <laughs> As they just keep going on about the smell. It's like, well, you don't have to be in here. You're making no, this worse. No, no, no. Everyone loved the smell. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe uh, you ruined our couch, but that's delightful. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like hazelnut. <laughs> Black raspberry. <laughs> oh, is it? Is, it, is that kiwi and raspberry? That's, oh, balsam? Oh, man. No, no, never kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. 
Is that how many do? Oh my goodness. <laughs> The lamest dream I ever had was, uh, it started off where I I went to a party and there was a whole bunch of people that I hadn't seen in a really long time. And I was really excited to see everybody. And I I was holding a jacket and I was just going around going like, Hey, so I just need to set my jacket down. Then I'll join everybody. Where can I set this down? And like, nobody would tell me where I could put my jacket. (laughs) And for some reason, like nothing could happen until I could set the jacket down and then the party was over by the time I ever found the room to put the jacket in. That's kind of terrible. <laughs> and then yeah. Thanos. Yeah, and they then I had won. sex with Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> but right. in the middle of it, Chase broke in and jizzed on his chin. <laughs> <laughs> and Thanos! I, and I slid down the jizz water slide. There was no jizz involved. <laughs> I just thought you were riding his face. <laughs> This is a Thanos dream. There was jizz involved. <laughs> I thought I said it was okay. a Thanos dream. <laughs> uh, there was a lot of jizz. <laughs> You've seen those guns. Those impeccable purple guns. <laughs> Imagine that huge purple dong. <laughs> I don't have to. I've seen it. <laughs> it's got a little gauntlet on it with some stones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he puts the, the, the power it's a stone piercing. on the tip. Yeah. <laughs> he turned it into a Prince Albert piercing. <laughs> he puts the time stone on his ball so he can last so long. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> We're finished when I'm finished. <laughs> You're just giving Chase fodder for his fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, gang, I would like to say that was a phenomenal A Quiet Place discussion. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> we done good. Ah, that's... What that's a movie. our best movie review you, you yet. Sh- you should have seen movie. the Thanos movie, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get around to it. When when, when the hype dies down, um, and I, I still don't know shit about that movie, which is amazing. I thought I would have heard something by now. So, yeah, when the hype dies down a little bit and I want to play catch up on a couple of films, then I'll see it and... When nobody you cares heard about anymore. It? That's crazy. No, I haven't. I haven't heard shit, which is amazing. I didn't hear shit about A Quiet Place either. I walked into that movie blind, like the day before. Cicely showed me a trailer, and I was like, "Yeah, I'd go see that." Like I had never heard of it, and it turned out to be pretty damn good. Yeah, very enjoyable. Very much a quiet place when that movie was happening, though. Holy shit! Like I, I heard about your instance, Chase. I feel bad because I bought a beer. And the the drink holder on my chair, every time I set my beer down, it was the loudest fucking noise in the world. Like, I was so embarrassed. But even worse, directly to my right, a lady had a jack-in-the-box burger with her. I swear to God, every time she took a bite, I could hear every condiment just squishing on itself. Who smuggles a burger into the theater? <laughs> yeah, right? She did, and the guy she was with, like, they just were, like, pulling them out of their pants and shit. There was, like, burgers and fries. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Unstraps and, one from her ankle. <laughs> but even, yeah, right? She's got a, like a gun holster down there, just holding a corn dog. But <laughs> I kind of want to go to that jack in the box and be like, ease up on the fucking condiments, man. <laughs> like, think of the overhead and think of these people's health. I just came from a quiet place. It's disgusting. <laughs> I want your loudest fuck burger. Yeah, I know you have it because I was just in a movie. Which one is <laughs> the loudest fuck burger, Mr. In the Box? I got yeah. it with extra mayonnaise. I would like never ever get popcorn or snacks or whatever at the theater, but now that we have movie pass and like movies are free after the first one, now now we uh now we do get popcorn and shit and and yeah, it was a terrible movie to have popcorn to. <laughs> <laughs> a quiet place. Have you ever wanted to learn how much you could hate other people in a theater? Come on down. <laughs> It's like you try to chew slower, but it's just prolonging it. (laughs) You just wait for those action scenes and just stuff your face real fast. It's two handfuls. Shove it in. I don't know if this typically happens in most movies or if I just happen to have like the chatty crowd, but like there was so much fucking people talking during my movie. And it was like, I wasn't immersed in it as much. Like, it kept pulling me out. I was like, fuck. And the worst part, like, Cicely was on my left. The three ladies directly to her left would not shut up the whole fucking movie. Like, what the fuck? What? Why do people yeah. even go to the movies when they do that? I think it was just like two daughters and a mom. And one of the daughters was flipping out. It's like, she's dead. She's dead. And she's 
she's got a baby and she's dead. And I was like, no, nah, honey, I don't think she's dead. I don't really think she is. Just keep watching. And of course, it's fucking loud because it's a quiet place. So there's zero sound during this whole goddamn movie. No shit, just keep watching. It's a movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what you do. But it's the first time the three of them had ever gone to a movie, clearly. And then there was some dude way in the back who was definitely talking business on a cell phone. Like, what the fuck is your deal, <laughs> Jesus man? Jesus Christ. On. Yeah, but, I mean, collectively, I thought the movie was great. Like, if you want to go to a movie and see Jim from The Office make hilarious faces and have all those funny quotes that he always did, well, don't go see this movie. Because <laughs> none of that shit happened. <laughs> but I didn't even realize he had such a big stake in this. Like, he wrote it, produced he directed it, directed it. Directed yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, like, he did a bunch. Of, like, when the credits were rolling, I was like, Jesus Christ. This man was on it, and hopefully it does well, because I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. It was like a refreshing movie. When I saw the trailer, I was like, ah, it might be another modern jump scare horror film. And there were some jump scare moments, but like it was genuinely like suspenseful. I thought it was good. Like I was, It did the- great, too. Like The first time we went, it was a fucking packed house, and we actually had to leave. Oh, yeah, you were telling me about that, yeah. Yeah, and the... <laughs> It, we didn't know that it was going to be so packed, and uh, the 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 vendor guy, the motherfucker, <laughs> he he was he was explaining to us how there was the only like two seats left, where there was like one in the front row and one like in the back or some shit, and he starts proposing it to us like, so how much do you two love each other? And we're just like, <laughs> we're a go. whole lot. <laughs> like, what are you getting at? And. He's like, well, here's the thing. You can only sit, one of you can only sit here and one of you can only sit here. It's like, well, go another time. What the fuck? It was stupid. How much do you two love each other? Is The the correct answer is none if we're going to (laughs) sit fucking 40 feet apart. How is he making that assumption? I think he was trying to take you home, Chase. Yeah. He was Mm -hmm. like, how much do you two love each other? And he was hoping Stacey would be like, not that much. He'd be like... (laughs) Coming home and ride my Thanos chin, baby. (laughs) Well, if I had seen the cues. (laughs) God, I'm so terrible at these. Every time somebody's hitting on me. I've got an infinity gauntlet at home of my own. I'll use it on you if you know what I mean. Boing. (laughs) For sex. (laughs) I will penetrate every orifice you will allow me to. We had a pretty, like, we haven't had obnoxious movie going experiences in a while, but since we've been going more and more, uh, I, I mean, most of the time we're, we're try we try to be pretty stealth about it. We try to go during, on the weekdays, either during the day or really late. Monday is movie day. Yeah. Monday? We, that- we do not go on the weekends anymore. People, we're not. People don't go out on Monday, so that's when we go. That makes yeah. sense. That makes that seems like a good time to do anything about town. Yeah, we don't want to see people, basically. Yeah, I get that. But we saw Super Troopers too, and there was like a huge group of like, we broke our our rule last Sunday when we wanted to see Super Troopers two before it was no longer in theaters, and uh, didn't do great. Yeah, it didn't seem to do great, but it was funny. It, yeah, it was all right. It was you, weird. It was like a movie from the nineties. Yeah, which. I mean, I kind of miss those movies, the, like, crude, wacky comedies. Yeah, so we broke our rule and went on a Sunday, and there was, like, a big group of loud, obnoxious frat dudes who were just, like, talking loudly to each other and, like, making loud jokes, and it's like, oh, fuck. Did we bring this on ourselves? We are seeing <laughs> Super Troopers too. Well, that's a, I think <laughs> that's a risk you're going to take any time you go to a Super Troopers movie. Like, I, I think that's just... Yeah, I, I'm going to probably... Uh, Get a lot of negative vibes from folks about this, but I just didn't even really like the first Super Troopers all that much. Like, I'm not even compelled to see the second one. Oh, well, I'll, eh. I'll cut that for you. <laughs> right. Well, I also, like, it came out, I probably saw it, like, eight years, nine years after What's it came problem? out. It's and, a classic comedy movie. Well, it just got hyped up so much that, I don't oh know, I think God. it just, I think everybody hyped it too big for me. I, I know what happened. Someone said, David, you're going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> That made you cross your arms, purse your lips, and endure it for two hours. <laughs> well, no, like all the, like the wacky comedies and like the crossing the line, like crude comedies and stuff like that. They, I mean, they're all right, but I don't know. They just don't do it for me as much. Nah, dude, it's good. Like, I, you know, if if it if it ends up on a streaming service, I might give it a shot one day when Sisley's out of town. But it's you know. got I mean, like it is... four or five just really classic bits in it. 
but I don't know. I, I get I get why it's not everybody's cup of tea either. It's it's like quintessential well, you, stoner we're comedy. comedy writers. <laughs> <laughs> How can you say that it's shit? We can't do better than that movie did. I do love Broken Lizard. I'm just, I'm just saying, like it's it's not what I want to go watch. Like I can get why it's funny and why people enjoy it, but it's not what I want to sit down and watch. Well, nobody knows what you want to watch. You don't even tell us. I don't even know most of the time, but I know I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. what? If there's one thing I know, it's what I hate, and it's a lot of things. <laughs> David said. <laughs> Extensive. I want to write comedy, but never watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should probably work on that. <laughs> new topic. <sighs> <laughs> Wait, new topic. We we got to segue into cyberbully. Oh, I guess we can do that with the new topic. Do it. New topic. ABC Family's Cyberbully. Well, speaking of unenjoyable movie-going experiences, uh, <laughs> I I think I made a promise in our second episode that I would never again watch a Lifetime film. Well, this today was not I broke... Lifetime. Yeah, this... and actually you didn't break anything because this was not a Lifetime film. Mm-hmm. Are you sure it wasn't a Lifetime film and then ABC Family just, you know, paid to have it on their channel? I am sure. I've read the Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> so was it just an ABC Family movie? In conjunction with Seventeen Magazine. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, it explains a few things, doesn't it? It explains a lot. Jesus Christ. So, okay, Say well, I guess I, I didn't break my promise. We, uh... Chase and Stacy asked me to watch this horrible movie so we could discuss it on the <laughs> podcast for you. And that movie is called Cyber Bully. Cyber Bully. Cyber Bully. It's a cybernetic bully from the future. <laughs> no, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a way better movie. Like, beep, bloop, hey, nerd, wedgie. I'd love that movie. <laughs> It was on Netflix for years, and then as soon as we go to watch it, it's not on Netflix anymore. But it is on YouTube. Yeah, like all shitty movies. 20 fucking million views. 20 million goddamn views. As all shitty movies that nobody actually wants to spend money on, you can find it on YouTube. This thing was actually a huge success. Seriously? I had never heard of it until YouTube brought it up to me. Yeah, let me see. The film tells the story of a teenage girl who was bullied online. Yep. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) You're building it up like it was this whole thing. (laughs) Hold on, I'm in the wrong section. (laughs) The film received a generally positive review from Common Sense Media. Well, okay, no shit. Common Sense Media, that's like some Christian... (laughs) Then why is it called Common Sense? Whoa! Whoa! (laughs) Shit, Stacy. Suck it, Christians. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Talk about the racy ass podcast. Damn. Yeah, Josh Green probably. <laughs> Put down the good book, Green. <laughs> Cyberbully gained three point four million views on its initial release date. That's that is not bad for TV, really. Yeah. I don't think Breaking Bad did that well. No, they did Rest shitty. The, the first season, they picked up a ton of steam near the end, but they. Like no, even at seasons. the end, it was like five million tops, and like any any episode of The Voice is like twelve, fifteen. Well, I think uh, like the last episode got something like seven or eight million views. But yeah, still, I mean, compared to this fucking shitstorm of a movie, Jesus. Cyberbully was TV's number one telecast for the eight to ten p.m. time slot. It became the week's number one TV film and the second most viewed TV film of the 2010 and 2011 season. Jesus. I wonder if it had, like, great marketing or something. They did have a campaign where people would add badges to their Facebook page saying, what did it say? Delete something. <laughs> Delete digital drama. Ugh. That's all And they that. did. They deleted all digital drama. Well, at that time, too, like 2010, 2011, like there was just like a lot of buzz about like cyberbullying and just bullying as a whole. So, I mean, it had all the right buzzwords and it was on every yeah. mother's brain. So guaranteed it did well. Like I thought yeah. for sure, like it, it, all... it must have come out at the just the right time. Yeah, like it was, it was right time, right place. And you somebody who formerly worked at Lifetime had to have had stake in this movie, seriously, because it has all... <laughs> 
all like the signs of it being it, a lifetime movie. It does like, have even, the makings, the fucking perfect white blonde mom who is uh-huh. just trying to keep her family together. <laughs> And we but, can only relate to it if it's a pretty young blonde girl. <laughs> the the brother and sister who have a love hate mm-hmm. relationship of get out of here, you little freak. <laughs> <laughs> you touch it, you die. Well, even too like so of course, cy- cyber bully the movie, of course computers are involved. But much like the cyber seduction movie, cyber's in the name. And it was, like, super cool blonde-haired mom trying to keep it all together with her, like, website monitoring software and all that shit. It's like, there's a lot of pieces that are connecting here between that shitty Lifetime movie that we saw and this really shitty movie. I so thought that, that as well. I'm glad you said something about that. Like, immediately, I was like, this is the same fucking movie almost. Like, she even <laughs> almost looked like the mom from that last movie. Yeah, and even, like, uh, th- this is the scenario where the dad cheated on the mom. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, because <laughs> I'm a fucking psychopath, I wrote down every time they mentioned the dad and the timestamps that they mentioned him. Uh, <laughs> it was totally inconsequential to this story. Yeah, with within the first two minutes alone, they mentioned um, how scummy the dad was. <laughs> like, five minutes into the movie, like, just to, just to make sure, like, you know, uh, super cool mom and scummy dad and things things are just hectic and the mom's got to keep it together kind of deal like it was a lifetime movie here let me let me read the first chunk of the plot outline (coughs) jesus chase (laughs) taylor hillridge is a teenage girl who is being raised by her single mother chris her mom's name is chris i don't remember that but sure that's what that says along with her younger brother eric living in St. Louis, Missouri. She is close friends with two other girls, Samantha Caldone and Cheyenne Mortensen. Man, I really did not pick up on their names. I wrote the names down because I knew I forget. Earlier, Taylor made a seemingly innocuous comment to one of her classmates, Lindsay Fordyce, to which Lindsay took great offense. That's not exactly what happened. Well, no, 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 no. I even wrote that down. Like, the reason that Lindsay was pissed at Taylor was because during their health class, she made a comment saying, like, I want to wait until 18 to go all the way. And then Lindsay, who had been doing it since she was in the ninth grade, took offense to that. And apparently that's why Lindsay was lashing out at her the whole movie. Because I Taylor, missed it. Wait, wait, say that Taylor, Taylor was on her fucking soapbox the whole time. Like, I'm going to wait. And anybody else who doesn't is impure. And Lindsay was like, you bitch. So I get, I get why Lindsay did what she did. I thought but, uh, the animosity came from when she called her a bitch on, on Clickster. Well, so Lindsay was already lashing out at Taylor, and this was post the comment that she had made in the health class because Lindsay was outraged that she was putting her down because she was taking some D since the ninth grade, and Taylor was <laughs> like, you got to be 18 before you take some D. I think this is the first time I've heard someone our age say, take the D. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Lindsay, Lindsay just had a bad taste in her mouth about Taylor, our main girl, um, who was cyberbullied. Uh, she just had a bad taste in her mouth because of a offhanded comment she made in health class. And, you know, Lindsay didn't like it too much because she had been promiscuous before the age of 18. Well, wait, how does that... Before, the, like, the movie starts up and they're making fun of Lindsay for... Or, or they're saying that Lindsay made fun of her for having a hideous jacket. And they're like, well, she's a bitch. Yeah, and the first thing I remember the bully saying to her was, my brother has those shoes, he's 10. Yeah, the animosity already existed. Well, yeah, and the three girls, when they're walking into school, that's when they were talking about it. It's just like, why is Lindsay so mad at you again? Oh, because of this comment I made in health class. Like, that's what it was. And it was Uh, her saying that she thought, you know, you need to wait till 18. And her friend, it wasn't Samantha, the other one, I forgot the name already, was just like, yeah, she's been getting it on since she was in the ninth grade. (laughs) And then they kept going. Yeah, like how it, can we sort these friends out? There's the catfish friend, and then there's... Yeah, the, Samantha's uh, the catfish, and uh, Sheila? <laughs> and the the Mexican friend. I guess I didn't write her name down. Okay, well, she didn't have much part in the movie anyway. But she was a cunt. <laughs> she, she really was. Wasn't her she dad was the like, principal, fuck too? fuck off, you're bringing my social status down. Go yeah, away. Yeah, she bailed on <laughs> she, her right away. She, immediately. A me- this like one little tiny thing went southward. She was like, "Fuck it, you're gone. You're not my friend." 
<laughs> piece of shit. And at the end, she comes bouncing all back, like, hoo, hoo, I'm glad I stuck up for you. No, you piece of shit. That's not how it works. Yep. I know. In the end, she they she just got back together with her friends who just totally had betrayed her. The yeah. Having shitty friends is the bigger problem than the cyberbullying. Yeah, so, so Lindsay and Taylor, like, Taylor is the main character who was actually a bitch. <laughs> she was not a good person. Oh, no. no, she was not a You're good person. This? <laughs> <laughs> she she had some real bitch moments, and we can All go right, over that. Ankle away. But <laughs> I'm not. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not defending Lindsay or Samantha, but I just want to be clear that Taylor was a piece of shit too. Like everybody in this movie was just a shithead. <laughs> She did the. I do remember one moment where I was like, "What the fuck?" Where <laughs> uh, the uh, we're like jumping around a lot here, but I know yeah, start yeah. at the beginning, you guys. So the movie starts out with Taylor and Samantha, who is her best friend. They're you know messaging each other back and forth about you know uh, school and it's my birthday and can I borrow your shoes? Like she just talks regular... about a birthday party that I don't think ever takes place. Yeah, that never happened. Yeah, I wrote, they, I wrote it down. There's a line that's like, a party meets presents, money, yeah. and bling. <laughs> yeah, bling. This came out at a time where whatever old people were writing it still thought people said bling. And they probably hadn't been for a long time, even before that. yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, that's one thing I wrote down. Is she mentions that her mom has a uh, computer monitoring software. She has learned from cyber seduction. Yeah. <laughs> That that is what you have to do to raise your kids is is to watch every keystroke and dick stroke that they have. <laughs> well, they they put that they put that in your head at the beginning of the movie. Like her mom is walking around while she's instant messaging Samantha, and she's like, "Geez, can I just get some privacy?" And her mom was like, "Anything you put on the internet is not private. Just remember that." Then what does mom do? She buys her daughter a laptop for her birthday and goes. Here, here's your laptop. And her daughter is like, there's got to be a catch. And her mom is like, nope, no catch at all. But here's the catch. To be a writer. Because she trusts she trusts her daughter to use that laptop uh, effectively. But no, like, see, like the mom is just like, there's no catch, I promise. And I was like, there's got to be a catch. There's no catch. But here's the rules. Like, that's the fucking catch, mom. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what she was just asking. And you know what? what she what, says the rules, and then she makes up new rules later, as if they existed the whole time. Yeah, I wrote that down too. She was like, <laughs> and "There's this rule." <laughs> she just kept also, coming up you with all can't these say rules. mean things. That was here. yeah. That was the most adorable rule I've ever heard. Is you, you know my rule about you can't use the internet for saying mean things to people. <laughs> but mom, I'm commenting on YouTube. <laughs> 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 Fuck you, Chase. Your jokes are shit. <laughs> <laughs> so she she gets this laptop from mom and immediately the very first thing she does she's hanging out with her three friends and they're like you got to get hooked up on this site called clickster and clickster in this fucking universe that was created is it's a facebook-esque website but it's just a bunch of boned up teenagers talking about fucking <laughs> and calling each other skanks and she's like yeah i gotta get on there then that's where the movie just takes a nosedive yeah, and you know what's funny is that the the fucking the block button would defeat this whole movie. Yeah, yeah. You're setting your profile to private. And it exists in their fake Clickster website. There is an ignore button. There's little X's uh, on every message to close it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is a, a Facebook where you cannot refuse a message ever. And, <laughs> and everything you say goes up there forever for everyone else to see. Yeah, and you don't have to add friends. Like, everybody can just see exactly what you're saying, specifically you, just like the people you live around, specifically your school, too. The The algorithm for this thing is ridiculous. It just knows who you are, where you go to school, and who you go to school with. So only those people can see you directly. There's a constant live chat. Constant. <laughs> and apparently Where Lindsay JD is, is like, I'm horny. <laughs> I'm so damn horny, ladies. <laughs> and then... You know, of course, like it's a it's a high school movie. So our main character Taylor, she's got herself a crush on homeboy named Scott, Scott, who is on the basketball team, and he's got a really big dome. Did you catch that? He has a huge dome. 
were, you were so focused on people's foreheads. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even his forehead. The 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 his huge head. I don't I don't know what's in there, but he had who massive dome, and he's got a shaved head too. So that just amplified it. But anyway, like dude's got a she, hell of a coconut. She is all about Scott. She's never been on Clickster, and her her best friend. Wait, wait, we never said what the mom's rules were. The rules are. One, no inappropriate sites, and two, no giving out personal information. And what is what is uh what is what does Taylor do? She goes to the the weird like seedy underbelly of the internet Facebook and just starts putting all of her personal information up there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then she hooks up with a dude from Cyber Seduction, learns about <laughs> all these websites. <laughs> then she becomes addicted to porn. Yeah, like, she goes what? to this Chinese market where you can pay him five dollars to use his computer. <laughs> she sits on a really jizzy chair and <laughs> like, what are they trying to sell in this movie anyway? Too like, she goes on their Xboxes. The, the oh yeah, what's that Xbox decal on everybody's <laughs> laptop? The Xbox what logos. the fuck is that? Every computer is an Xbox. Yeah, but no, like she she goes onto this stupid fucking website and like this is how you know this shit's like made for paranoid moms. Because, like, on this website, you got to tell a little bit about yourself. Like, what are you wearing? And what color are your undies? And the girls are having, like, a five-minute chat about it. It's like, I said my undies were pink. It's like, I said my undies were black. And they're like, oh, you said you had black undies? And then Taylor's like, I'm going to say I have pink. And they're like, don't do that, girl. She's like, all right, I'm going to say I have blue undies. Like, what the fuck is all this? Yeah, what are the stupid fucking movie? They're saying that, that black underwear is for whores. Yeah. Right, uh, white underwear is for virgins, children, virgins. Yeah, uh, pink underwear is is more neutral. I remember taking Still stupid hot. quizzes like that in like middle school. Yeah, but was that like your profile? Like, hey, world, like this is like it was hi. kind of framed like that was just like your whole profile. <laughs> oh, jeez. So yeah, she's like people uh, ask me about my fake black underwear all the time. <laughs> got Taylor, you know she's she's all hopped up on Scott, the basketball player. Like she wants to be in a relationship with him and wait till she's eighteen to fuck. I guess that's like her her deal. But her best friend Samantha is like, uh uh-uh, uh, you don't want no part in Scott. I was seeing his friend, and after he fucked me, he Charlie. left. Charlie and Scott's good. Was that his name? Yeah. <laughs> All she right, hooked she was... up with Charlie. They had sex on the second date, and then he never talked to her again. And she was like, "Scott's gonna be the exact same way, I swear." And you know, she, of course, doesn't listen to her friend's advice whatsoever. She's just like, "No, it's gonna be different. We're gonna wait till we're eighteen. And you know, she's talking to him in class and everything. And then she gets up on Clickster because she wants to connect a little bit more with him for whatever weird fucking reason. As she's setting up her profile, she immediately gets an invite from Scott, who's just like, "Oh, it's so glad! I'm so glad to see you finally get on here." Like, how the fuck did he even know? How the fuck he's, did he even know? He's like he, blue underwear, huh? No, he talked <laughs> yeah. about it with her in the classroom. He was like, "I like Clickster more than Facebook. It's more raw. It's more raw." Yeah, David, <laughs> yeah, they thanks, set that fish. up. Come on. Did she say she was going to join it that night? I think so. And he said, "Like, oh, there's a chat where like." You know, people from her class all go to. It's pretty cool. Yeah, there was a scene where she's like, I'm going to flick my bean to you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, punch that bean. So, like, he, so what was he doing? He was just sitting there, like, punching in her name and searching over and over again, like, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. F5, F5, F5. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he's on there and, uh, like before he even finishes the profile and so she's like Ooh, now I got Scott so she's invested on there and then of course Lindsay is still taking jabs at her because she posted a, a picture of her and Samantha and Lindsay's like oh look it's Lardo and Dogface is Sa- you know. Samantha is the the catfish friend yes okay yeah yeah and they just brush it off like normal people they're just like haha whatever and like yeah, they like, move on which one's Dogface and you know which one like it's like shut up like what, but that was the, there was no, the appropriate what do you reaction. Mean, shut up! That's like a, a completely normal reaction. That's how they should have reacted to everything that happened to them. It's so it, it's, that was the wackiest thing to me was that they brushed that off like you know oh these are some well adjusted kids like they and seem then the to next get it. time it happened it was fucking world ending yeah mm-hmm. yeah then it uh you know cuts back to the class and everything and you know Taylor she's talking to Scott and then who's the kid in front of her Caleb. 
I don't uh, I don't remember the names. The gay kid? Yeah, she was talking to him and then Scott was like something like, Yeah, he's a weird dude and then Taylor was like, Yeah, I totally <laughs> get that. Ha <laughs> ha and because he's what the a gay dick. kid. <laughs> yeah. Like she's just agreeing with him. She's like, Yeah, that little that little queer is weird. Ha ha ha. Put it in me when we're eighteen and it's appropriate. Did you did you remember the <laughs> she scene? She gave him where finger guns when she said that. <laughs> Samantha goes home. Uh, and they show that she's like a little less well adjusted than Taylor yeah. in her household because she uh, goes to talk to her mom and her mom is sleeping with her little brother on the on the couch. I, I'm not sure why, but they're asleep. And then yeah. she goes to go talk to her dad, but he's busy with business. Yeah, he starts talking business, and she's like, ah. and then she goes right to the evil clickster. Yep. Yep. C L I Q U E stir. Yeah, they I like it too. Like shortly after that they show like a, a chat room that's up there and they're just going through like bands that are in it. And it's like, Are you guys gonna go see Crash and blah blah blah? And I love the band names. There was Crash and there was Tanked Fish. <laughs> which is Chase's band. That's his drunk band. Yeah. No. You fuck <laughs> what and then where did Scooby you come from? Have, have you learned nothing from this movie? You're going to continue bullying me. <laughs> <laughs> this is over the internet, too. So come take on, that, you, David. you smelly skank. You just, you're just you just a stinky fish market smelling I, whore. I, I, I am not a fish. <laughs> I, Caleb the gay kid told me he saw you blowing somebody for a nickel. You are... A bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you just got cyberbullied so hard. <laughs> Fuck. So yeah, uh, tanked fish chases band, uh, and then it keeps going through the chat, and then like yeah, there's that JD kid who's just like, "Man, we need more slutty girls in here." <laughs> I'm so horny. <laughs> That's my experience with high school boys. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, it goes through that, and then you see the girls, it's it's Friday, and they have a routine. Every single Friday, they go to the mall, right? Like, that's their thing, because they're girls. I don't know, you missed when, when Scott asked her for a bikini shot. Oh, And he's like, I saw you on Clickster, you know, you could use, like, more pictures of, like, maybe a bikini shot that I could jerk off to. Oh, wait, yeah, that's right, because her <laughs> girlfriends were just like, no, you don't need to put a bikini shot on there. She's <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and then it goes to them in the car going to the mall. Yeah, and, uh, who is it? Like, Samantha's driving and everything, and, you know, she, she's talking, she's trying to talk some sense into Taylor. She's like, you know, it's, it's Scott, he's, he's just gonna try to hit it and quit it, that's it, and... It's I not think, sense, that's just what her experience was. Well, I mean, come on, that's all Scott's Even trying to do. Even though it's fucking unbelievable, this is like some Christian bullshit where, where a guy has sex with her once and then it's like i'm never gonna talk to you again as soon <laughs> yeah. as that happens if, she, if if you have sex with a guy once he's gonna come back and back and back <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's high school yeah when when i was a younger fellow oh if i God. if i bedded a lady i didn't go that's all i need and then you know leave <laughs> like, <laughs> it was like a can we, can you just we get your again? briefcase and your hat and you go. <laughs> yeah, put on, my, put on my derby and my briefcase. Bup, 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 bup. Thank you, miss. Like, <laughs> now time to I'm go to the working forever. world. <laughs> I wish you the best so long, you whore. Like, But yeah, Samantha's like, uh, <clears throat> if, if you go out with Scott, he's just going to fuck you and then leave you forever. Yeah, and what she, she was like, you know, yeah. He said he wanted to see, like, a bikini shot of you. Do you think that's love? And then Taylor, being the huge bitch that she is. Pretty bitchy. <laughs> pretty bitchy. She was like, what, do you think having sex with, what was his name, Charlie? Yeah. She was like, what, do you think having sex with Charlie that he never calls you back is love? It's like, what the fuck is that? You just put the knife in, twisted it, and broke the handle. You yeah. bitch. Just fucking, yeah, totally she just fucking, get out. Get her. out of the fucking car. Yeah, just slut shaming your best friend. Like, she's just like, look, something bad happened to me. I'm just looking out for you. She's like, you dumb bitch. Like, yeah. that's exactly what happened. So that's that's occurrence number one where I was like, wow, Taylor's a real bitch. You know, after so. she kicked her out of the car, too, she immediately drove home and catfished her. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the very next thing that happens is that she gets a a, a, a message from James, the uh, the fake boy. 
Yeah, she did seem like she, like her bottom line was that she wanted to look out for her friend, but then fortunately it turned out that she was nuts too because she fucking catfished her friend. Taylor finds out she gets a text message from Donald Trump (laughs) that says, oh my God, look at your clickster page. Very bad. (laughs) Very bad. (laughs) Well, wait, I'd like to point out too, like immediately after like she just shit all over her best friend. Before her best friend may have justifiably catfished her, like it cuts to her. <laughs> justifiably. Justifiably. <laughs> and she was like. Come on, man. And she, and she was saying. There's no justifiably catfishing people. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So, oh, my God. So he then is Taylor. Gonna ankle it. T- Taylor was like, it was totally worth it. Scott talked to me for like half an hour. Like, what a bitch. Like, she just shit on her best friend. She's like, worth it. Because this dude. Talk to me for thirty. What a what a bitch. What a, you don't do that to friends. Yeah, like she could at least respect her friend for trying to look out for her instead yeah. of being like, nah, I, I think you're just a whore and it's gonna work out for me. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Taylor is just like floating on a cloud of I'm a shitty douche, where like she just you know totally insulted her friend for thirty minutes of talking with boy and like things are awesome because she's talking to guy. The next morning though, tragedy strikes. Taylor is crying. And is just so upset in front of her mom because somebody, quote unquote, hacked her profile. And I can't remember exactly what they had posted about her, but it was along the lines of, oh, Chase has it. Go ahead, Chase. I'm a naughty bad girl. Someone should spank me. <laughs> so yeah, and pro- then, like, her whole school responds, like, yeah, what a fucking dirty whore. Dude, I'll she spank said you, she's baby. a naughty bad girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some guy's like, I want to see you naked. My favorite, though. My favorite was Michael Parker. <laughs> His reaction was like exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. You're not the same girl from chemistry class. That's all he said. <laughs> <laughs> I just I have such a hard time believing anyone taking seriously. I'm a naughty bad girl. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like it's like the porno stars would put that on their profiles from the, the cyber seduction one. Yeah. Uh, I'm then, a naughty bad girl and you can reach me 24 hours a day. And then, so, yeah, it's like this whole list of everybody responding to her, like, slap my butt comments. And then Lindsay, her enemy, is like, I'd rather slap your face. You can and see, this- like, the Christian mom thinking of the worst thing she could possibly write. Yeah, right? I've got it. I'm a naughty bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> So Lindsay makes her comment, and then this prompts Taylor to have um, a lapse of judgment, which she's a piece of shit. She would have done this anyway. Uh, she, she, <laughs> she responds to Lindsay, you're nasty and a bitch. Mm-hmm. T- Taylor's the bitch. Taylor's the bitch. Like, that's... What do you... Un- fuck you. What are you talking about? That is so uncalled Lindsay's for. Lindsay's been nothing but a fucking asshole to this girl. And she needs to brush and it off. like, she retaliates. And she's a bitch. Retaliation is a terrible thing, Siddharth. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that exchange. <laughs> yeah, and at that point... You that's, can't this, equal this. This is, the first, this is the first time where the mom Lindsay adds another... Was, she's the good guy of the movie, if you really think about it. No, no. The Lindsay's way she not... was, like, bullying everyone is, like... <laughs> You know, don't don't you spin this, Siddharth. Don't you spin this. I'm not saying that Lindsay is a good person, but Taylor is absolutely a bitch. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So let's move on. So <laughs> this this is when this is where her mom adds another you know rule. It's the purpose of the movie to show that she's made mistakes as well, right? Hmm. <laughs> there's there's making mistakes, and then there's just really being like a shitty. No, no, person. no. It's it's deliberately trying to show that it's easy to make mistakes as well. Yeah, but she uses people too. (laughs) We'll get to that. So it turned out that it was her little brother and his friend that hacked, quote unquote, her profile by guessing her password. Which Yeah, it was like like a dead animal that they had or something. Yeah, because I know that if I hacked into my... Hacked. If I knew my sister's password, I would write, I'm a naughty bad girl. Someone (laughs) should spank me. Yeah, if that was me, like, I'd be a little bit more ridiculous about it. Uh, It'd be clear that... Like, like, I eat poo-poo every (laughs) day. (laughs) The mom should be taking that kid to therapy. (laughs) Because that's fucked up. (laughs) 
He's gonna sexualize his sister. That's, that's fucking weird. Yeah, that was kind of creepy. But, uh, not to add credence to David's oh argument that, <laughs> that Taylor's a piece of shit. Um, I think it was the next day in class where the Caleb guy, she she talked to him a little bit about bullying. Who's yeah. Caleb? That That's, that, that's the, the kid that sits the, in front of her in history, the kid who's gay in the movie. Yeah. Oh, the gay kid, okay. Yeah. And he he says to her, like, you know, I, I've, I've put up with a lot of bullying myself for being gay. They told me, like, I was too gay to live and blah, blah, blah. And they said all these horrible things. And her response is... Well, you are gay, so it's different for me. And it's like, yeah. fuck you, bitch. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's wait, so I'm, much I'm not worse. actually a slut, but you want to fillet dude, so you deserve it. <laughs> yeah, it's like he so can't help Taylor's who he a is. Bitch. Wait, the last Taylor's thing he bitch. says too is like they call me they call me fairy, and they say that I'm like too gay to live. And she's like, well, it's true about you. <laughs> Like, too gay to live. Yeah, it's fucking horrible. <laughs> you think he should die? <laughs> yeah. You know, I wish I knew what this was in context to. I'm looking at my notes here. In quotes, uh, like, fake trust me, period. I wish you'd just do it to her mom. What a bitch. Like, so this is something that Taylor said to her mom. Uh, I don't get what it is, though. Well, after the mom uh, sees that I'm a naughty bad girl thing uh she introduces a new rule as if it's been there all the time and the new rule is you can't use the internet to be insulting or call someone names <laughs> yeah that was not one of her rules nope. her yeah, rules was... were no inappropriate sites and uh one other dumb shit thing i can't remember don't give out personal information <laughs> don't, yeah no personal information which you assume means like don't give credit card numbers don't give your name and address but in the context of the movie it means don't tell people that uh your dad divorced your mom because he cheated on her <laughs> yeah with a 25 year old oh and uh for anybody nobody's actually keeping score here but at this point in the movie they've it's like 25 minutes into the movie and they've already referenced the dad six times for being a piece of shit really yeah and he like yeah. never makes an appearance oh no at uh Let's see. <laughs> David has at, logged. Huh? <laughs> at the one hour and two minute mark, we'll get to that later, but that's okay. But up until that point, dad is referenced so many times, but he does a half ass job when he's actually dadding. But let's continue with where, where we're at. All right. So the, the, uh, Taylor and her mom have a scene together where Taylor walks away and she's like, I wish you'd actually trust me and not just fake trust me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's And that's then what the I mom has a shot where she's holding her head in her hands, and it's like, you're killing your mom. And again, Taylor's Come on, a bitch. kids watching this, this movie, don't kill your mom. She <laughs> loves you. Uh, and then, you know, it's more, more drama and more everything. Like, they're back at school, and Samantha's still trying to talk some sense into Taylor about Scott because, you know, he, she's got a feeling he's going to hit it and quit it. And... <laughs> And while this is happening, while she's, you know, trying to look out for her friend, Taylor just says to her, just because you got dumped doesn't mean I will. Like, what a bitch! It's <laughs> what pretty a bitch. fucking bitchy. It's pretty bitchy. It is. And Scott so, was a gentleman. He brought her ketchup. <laughs> he, yeah, he brought her one package of ketchup after he invited her to the no, spring no, fling. No, it was three. Was it three? I only saw it one. Was, it was three packages. I only that, saw one. That would have won Chase's heart for sure. Yeah, I love ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Fun side note, everybody. There was one time where we went to Costco, and they had ketchup dispensers with the pump top, and Chase <laughs> bought one, and that stayed in the fridge for a while, taking up so much shelf space just to have pumpable ketchup. <laughs> yep. So but... what? What is your problem? <laughs> I'm just saying, you love ketchup. <laughs> once Chase had a lot of ketchup, and then he used it over a long period of time. <laughs> no, David it was, was a pretty, like, it was I a... don't like ketchup as much as Chase, so this is... Mildly was, inconvenient for me. <laughs> it was a pretty short period of time, and it took up the tall shelf in the fridge. <laughs> it was a short period of time. Yeah, you got you burnt through that ketchup. It was impressive. <laughs> he puts ketchup on like most things. No, the, I've the seen pump it. got clogged up like right away, and I you just couldn't use the pump. Oh, is that? <laughs> and we had to spoon out the ketchup. Yeah. <laughs> God forbid. Well, God forbid. Yeah, you're supposed to. <laughs> ketchup is a squeezable condiment. What is your problem? All right, let's get back to the movie. 
<laughs> this has been ketchup talk. <laughs> okay, so now is the time where James, who is uh, the catfish personality of Samantha, goes on Clickster and says, Taylor gave me an STD because she fucked my dick. <laughs> <laughs> As With opposed to other pussy. parts of it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, he said, he said, you're a skanky whore, I got the clap. <laughs> yeah, and there was a comment that was like, I could smell the clap on her. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was a repeating, repeating trend in this movie, just referring to how smelly somebody was. Like, it is a terrible offense to be a stinky person in this town. Because there was, like, the girl who was like, she sits in front of me in algebra and she smells terrible. And then, yeah, like, I can smell the clap on her. It's like, oh, she smells like whore. Like, there's the kid <laughs> in the YouTube video that was actually kind of funny that was like, she smells a bit like a sewer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I could be friends with that kid. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I gave a sniff. Kind of like a sewer. Kind of like a sewer. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. This is when she decides that she's no longer going to be including her mom in these messages. Which is a slippery slope. Yeah. You always tell your mom. <laughs> Especially if she's super cool and keeping the family together. If she's blonde and she knows everything. <laughs> she's super yeah. cool, too. And she's bony as shit. <laughs> no body shame, Chase. Eh, fuck that blonde <laughs> bitch. <laughs> So, like, at this point, like, a, a ton of stuff is spreading because, uh, again, on Clickster, everybody from this high school exclusively can see everything that's happening, whether you've added them as a friend or not. It could be your worst enemy. So, it's it's like, you're, oh, my God, she's a whore. Oh, my God, this. JD is still like, I'd still put my dick in that. And <laughs> <laughs> Where are all the horny girls at? <laughs> I got a horny penis ready for them women's. But, so... <laughs> I got the clap and I'm ready to go. <laughs> you can't get the clap twice. Uh, give me a round of applause. Let's do this. So, <laughs> so at school, of course, like everybody knows what's going on. And uh, God, what is her name? Was it Sheila? I don't know. It was the Mexican friend. Yeah. Her friend totally turns on her because she's giving her support in the bathroom. She's like, it's okay. It's just the internet. You'll get over this. You're strong. You got this, Taylor. You got this. Then Lindsay walks in and is like, oh, it's the skank parade. And then she's like, I'm out. Friendship's yeah, she over. She turns on him so quick. She really just turns. Yeah, and then and then Taylor goes to her house wearing the the hoodie of depression. Yeah. Hoodie of sorrow. The hoodie of sorrow. And she's like, I can't believe you did that. She was like, you got me involved in this. She was like, you said I could get out of this, but they called me a skank. Get out of here. Like, you just should have called her a bitch. Then none of this would have happened. And that's my stance, too. She should have yeah, been an see, adult about it. that's the movie telling you that she made a mistake. I'm just saying, Siddharth. It has consequences to the one action that she had. Even though Lindsay, this entire movie, is like, Fuck you, you fucking bitch, and you smelly pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying Lindsay is, you know, the better person here by any means. But Taylor is kind of a bitch. You've said it at least three times. What? No, no. Lindsay is not a good person. <laughs> but, I mean, she was getting all high and mighty in front of Lindsay and calling her out in health class when everybody knows <laughs> that Lindsay has had some loose lady experiences with gentlemen suitors. And she, she fucking, was, you say, I'm not, not saying that Lindsay was right, but. But I get Lindsay. <laughs> I'm not saying she's right, but I get her. <laughs> <laughs> so well, whatever like, the mexican girl slams the door on her like fuck you uh, we yeah, can't they, be friends anymore because they, i don't want to be called a skank on clickster they got this flimsy ass fucking relationship <laughs> then uh you know taylor runs away the the saddest weirdest looking run in the rain too did you catch that like her arms <laughs> are just like kind of flailing everywhere it almost yeah. seemed like she was trying to pull a joke on set but, like, somebody was in the bushes, like, we're still rolling! She was like, oh, shit, and, like, pulled it together at the end. Or it was, like, one, one of multiple takes where they're like, run sadder! Sadder! Yeah. <laughs> Flail more! <laughs> she this just sarcastically what... flails her arms, and it's like, perfect! Yeah, and <laughs> at this point in the movie, too, like, uh, she's still on her three-day hiatus from her laptop because she got grounded. So, uh, what does she do? She goes over to Samantha's place and is just like, can I use your internet? 
Like, what a, what a bitch. Like, she's got to go on there and see what people are saying about her now. She's obs- she's obsessed with reading terrible things about herself. It's yeah. exactly like the cyber seduction kid who just couldn't get away from the porn. Yeah, oh, that's true. But so, this is also when the movie turns into uh, telling its viewers that we need to change the laws about free speech. <laughs> Which I'm fucking against. Yeah, me too. Like, uh... Eat shit. Fucking... <laughs> We need to make laws that people aren't allowed to be mean on the internet. If you're mean to a minor, you should be... (laughs) To that I say, suck my dick. Suck my dick. Me and Thanos. (laughs) (laughs) Gonna wipe out half of you. (laughs) Don't you spoil in the movie. Yeah, that was was the fourth act. The best part. (laughs) They say it like at the beginning. (laughs) It's like the whole plot. <laughs> Which the, the mom has a conversation with the teacher and the teacher's like, well, we want to uh, be able to control the students' online habits outside of school, but because of the law, we can't. Yeah. It's like fucking good. That's <laughs> but this is this is you can't we're, control we're, what kids say. We're skipping <laughs> a very important part of the movie. You know, this is uh, it's right in line with my notes. No, no, no. This is the this is the part in the movie where the teenagers film that awesome movie with the cardboard cutout of Taylor's face. <laughs> An awesome movie. <laughs> An awesome movie. Nobody she... was making videos that cool when I was in high school. Nobody. Yeah, like... well, because it took a fucking budget. Can you imagine having a high quality photo of Taylor's face? You go to Kinko's, you spend what, like fucking forty dollars? Yeah, to blow it up on cardboard. Yeah, and getting this nice. Yeah. And then you got a. Uh, There's costumes involved. <laughs> you get the razor blade and carefully cut around the face and the eyelids. But the movie was great. It was just like her on a street corner and some guys walking by with another cardboard face. She it was, was like, great. She was like, hey, I'll bang you for five bucks. And he was like, oh, pew, you, you smell terrible. She was you like, smell fine, like a $2. Bit of a sewer. Is that what he said? Yeah. <laughs> he was a funny guy. <laughs> and she was like, maybe two dollars. No. Uh, maybe a nickel? No. I'll pay you. He's like, get out of here, smelly chick. And what would you what'd you say at the end of it? <laughs> she yeah. says, I pretend that I'm holy and pure, but I'm actually a dirty little whore. <laughs> That's what it was like. Yeah. I'm a dirty little whore. Like that. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> You really could uh, have put that directly next to the scene where her and her friend just laughed off the uh, the mean comments of like lard face, uh, not lard face, <laughs> dog face and lardo. <laughs> lard face and doggo. <laughs> lard, lard face and doggo are way better names. Yeah. Just, you know, they, they treated that, they, they were so normal about that and just brushed it off. But then with this cartoonishly stupid video about her. That's like, I'm a pregnant, smelly whore. She was like, oh my god! People Man, believe this! Well, this was actually, this was part of the when the, the sequence of the walls crashing down on her. Because this is when, uh, I, I don't think we mentioned it, but Scott was going to go to the dance with her. And then she goes to talk with Scott. And Scott's like, my mom is making me go with Marnie instead. It's totally not my decision. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not being a coward. <laughs> <laughs> and then she runs away from that and goes to the bathroom to salvation. But what does she find? The whole fucking Lindsay Bully crew. Oh, yeah. And they're like, I guess she hasn't seen the video because she's a cunt. <laughs> 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 and then they all walk out of the bathroom and individually look her up and down as they go, which is a hilarious <laughs> shot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then she goes and finds the video of the dirty little whore. And then she immediately films a suicide video. Just like, ah, I don't even respect me anymore. This is the end. And then immediately you know, Samantha It starts with, I'm the real Taylor Hillrich. As if people were confusing <laughs> <laughs> the, the fake pregnant uh, paper mask version of her for the real version. Yeah, right? Giant, <laughs> giant cardboard cutout. Oh, I thought that was her. <laughs> <laughs> Like, to be fair, I think she meant, like, I'm not actually all the things that have been said about me, but 
I, I do love to look no, at no, it no. from that perspective. Don't bring logic into this. <laughs> so Fine. She, she, uh, <laughs> she does her suicide video. And then Samantha, mind you, again, she was catfishing and stirring the pot even more, saying that she was this James dude who got the clap from her. She sees the video and is like, oh, what have I done? And, you know, calls her, doesn't get through. So she calls the really cool mom. The mom is like, I'll be right there, and, like, speeds to the house. She calls the paramedics, too, who show up at the same time as the mom. Yeah, yeah, perfect timing. And Samantha gets into the house. She just walks in, like, every door is fucking unlocked. And, like, <laughs> Taylor's little brother is playing some some weird video game. And she's like, have you seen your sister? And he's like, no, I'm just going to beat off to some internet porn. <laughs> and she runs upstairs. <laughs> She runs upstairs and finds Taylor in a bathroom that has a washer and dryer in it, which I've never seen before. Um, I don't know if I could take a shit while, like, the rinse cycle was happening. But <laughs> Taylor sit. It, it, I don't know, man. What just, are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, it's too maybe noisy I, in here. I can't poop. I couldn't shit while laundry was going. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I think I would just think about it too much. Just like, oh, got those clothes in there. I'm going to have to fold them. But, you know, I wouldn't be proper shit townin'. But you, are you can't be shit. distracted while you poop. He's no, I, I I can take distraction while I poop, but that's a completely different level. Like, Let, let's pause this and, and talk about why you said that. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of weird. Why you said it, like, what you did there. It was a double stacked washer and dryer in the shit closet. That's kind of weird. I, I've I've known washer and dryers to be in. Yeah, bathrooms. I've been in bathrooms with washers and dryers. It's... Are you shitting me? I've never seen that a day in my life. Yeah, well, fucking get out in the world. Yeah, David. <laughs> I've been all over the place. <laughs> in Arizona. Well, yeah, f- like, yeah, a lot of Arizona. I've been to Arizona, I've been to Nevada, I've been to California. <laughs> seen it all. <laughs> I've seen this world. Even though most of those were motels. <laughs> Where the washer and dryer is in the bathroom. No, um, so <laughs> Samantha is there and she breaks into the bathroom and Taylor's there crying, and she cannot open a pill bottle to save her life. Could not it's get like through she... that child child luck. Yeah, thank God for child caps. Yeah, because this 17-year-old would have been dead if there wasn't the push down and turn right method on this bottle. Like, she even says, she's like, I can't get it open! And then Samantha wrestles it out of her hand. Pills spill everywhere on the ground, and then it cuts to them in the hospital. And I don't well, even fucking, know why. Even if she took those pills, they were reacting immediately like mm-hmm. they would have pumped her stomach whatever and y- y- you know what people don't fucking kill themselves on pills like almost ever yeah because <laughs> you have to have some really strong prescription pills to be able to do that much damage if you're alone and you take 500 advil or whatever you can kill yourself but it's an arduous and long process filled with tons of pain and suffering uh so yeah. <laughs> so it immediately cuts to It's not like she's gonna drown, uh, fucking swallow the bottle and then die immediately Yeah So then it cuts to a, a hospital from fucking Vietnam A US barracks hospital with just green wet walls Where everybody, there's like 90 people lined up to, Did you happen to notice like how weird that hospital looked? They're treating her even though she didn't swallow a single pill She didn't do anything and the doctor's like Well we probably gotta keep her overnight He's just charging the mom. That's what he's doing. He's racking yeah, up right? the bill. She needs tranquilizers. That'll yeah. get her real high. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get this bitch so high she won't even try to kill herself. So like, <laughs> so yeah, she's just fine. She's like, ah, oh, you know, I don't, uh, I don't know what came over me. She's in the bed and like everything's fine now. And then, uh, then what happens? Detective Mom is on the case. That's right. <laughs> I wrote, literally what I Chase wrote said. Detective Mom in my notes <laughs> as well. <laughs> Are you shitting me? No, I'm not. I wrote That's it. awesome. And he yeah, said it aloud. <laughs> so Detective Mom is on the case at this point. Yeah, because Samantha tells the mom that James isn't real, and Detective Mom is like, hmm. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> failed, failed to mention that Samantha was there at the hospital too, and if you remember from what we said before, Samantha was catfishing her, and Mom was like, can you tell me anything about this James guy? And then she locked up. She was like, oh, I don't know. He goes to a different... You know what? Just, just have Taylor call me sometime. I, I, you know what? I gotta go. Goodbye. Yeah, I, I, I gotta get out of here. You, you, I hope your kid's okay. Goodbye. It's like, yeah, it's not <laughs> suspicious. Did you catch this where the mom tells her son, "Don't tell your dad that 
uh, our daughter tried to kill herself. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty fucked up. It never came back either. Like, just yeah. just don't tell him he cheated on me, so he doesn't deserve to know <laughs> yeah. that our daughter tried to kill herself. Yeah, he he shouldn't get the chance to comfort her or what let her know that, that he shit? cares too. Why was that included? Because this is this is pandering to moms. That's all it's doing. I guess it, it's like they kept bringing up the dad throughout the movie. They're like, "Oh shit, how do we mention him?" Uh, we'll we'll talk about not telling him and then move on. <laughs> By this point in the movie, they had already referenced the dad nine times, and because. <laughs> I, like I told you, I'm a psychopath, and I wrote all this down. So <laughs> by this point in the movie, he had been referenced nine times. So, yeah, so do what you will with that information. But Detective, Detective Mom, is on Mom the- goes to Lindsay's house. Yeah, but before that, too, before she even leaves, her daughter is fresh out of the hospital for trying to commit suicide. And the mom is like, all right, son, who, you know, got into her profile and said terrible things about her. I'm going to leave. You need to watch your... Your sister who tried to kill herself while I hit the streets, like immediately, like doesn't even stay because she's like, she's going to take a week off school. I'm going to take a week off work instead of being there with her daughter to make sure everything's OK and like help work through this. She's like, nope, I'm going door to door and I'm going to leave my shitty son responsible for this kid who tried to kill herself. Yeah, leave her in the care of this 14 year old that's just playing World of Warcraft all day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't be there for your don't be there for your daughter. Have your son do it. So she, so Detective Mom goes to Lindsay's place, and uh, for whatever reason, like... And the dad is like, I'm an attorney, and my daughter is uh, protected by the evil First Amendment of free speech. Yeah. He defended that, too. He was like, doesn't matter if she's making anybody miserable, that's how free speech works. It turns He's- out America is a nightmare world where anyone can say whatever they want without the cops arresting them. <laughs> Yeah, it, fuck you. Yeah, like <laughs> it, it is fucked up that the movie spins it like that's a bad thing. It but does this he was several times. This whole last act is com- committed to attacking free speech. Yeah, it, it makes me angry. <laughs> Just at the same time, in the context of the movie, he was hiding behind that to not punish his daughter, <laughs> even though she's being a fucking asshole. And he made he made sure too, like right when Lizzie's mom was like, "I'd like to speak to you know." Lindsay's mother and father, and he had to make it clear. He was like, well, Lindsay's mother's been dead for a few years, so I'll have to do. It's like, what the fuck is... <laughs> was that even I necessary? I think that was the good Christian bullshit, is telling you that without without a mother, that this is what can happen to a person. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's, that's what it was. That's exactly what it was. It's more of that lifetime shit. She doesn't have a mother, so that's why she's such a fucking bitch. Yeah. Hmm. So... <laughs> So detect, detective and her mom, dad is an evil attorney, and the law is evil, and the First Amendment is evil. It's saying whatever you want without getting arrested is evil. Ooh, ooh, evil. <laughs> <laughs> so like, mom gets shut down, and like, you know, Taylor's trying to get better, and it's clear at this point she values nothing. Taylor values nothing except for her status. And this Scott kid. Like, it doesn't matter about anything that's happening in the movie. Um, she, like, still, like, is snapping at her mom and everything for being concerned about her. What, like, what a bitch. Like, her mom is still worried because she almost tried to kill herself. And when she shows this concern, Taylor's like, what? You suck, mom. I don't like Taylor. She's a bitch. <laughs> yeah, you're not very easy on her, are you? No. I'm not giving her an inch. <laughs> I'd give her an inch if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, she'd get all of that inch. <laughs> she'd get the full inch. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Make it do the make it do the inch. inch. <laughs> One inch of fury. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes and trying to think back on this movie, and it really like. It, the the second half of this movie just ran so fucking long. I stopped like, taking notes at this point, actually. It's, it's hard to really talk about it because it just sucks. Like, this movie is terrible. It's really bad. It really dragged on at the third act. Like, wrap it up. You know, one of the things they tell you is that you can you can call a bully's internet service provider and complain about them and they will cut off service. <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah, fucking right. <laughs> You're going to call Comcast and say, Sheila was mean to me. And they're like, well, 
I no longer want to make a hundred dollars a month from them. <laughs> <laughs> and Comcast is like, we're gonna do what's right. I mean, it. I think it's just just to wrap it up though. It, it's interesting that towards the end, part of the lesson was, you know, don't let them get to you. Don't engage. Yeah. Uh. That's like, not what the movie's telling you. The movie's telling you change no, the laws so you can't speak. No, they literally said that though at the like the anti-bullying meetings and stuff. But they also said the law stuff, which is wrong. Obviously, we need to change the laws so that you can't say Lindsay's a fucking cunt on the internet. Yeah, it, it it's it was contradictory to the the lesson that you you shouldn't let it get to you and you shouldn't engage. Kids getting bullied is a problem, but. You know, you, you can't change the laws of free speech without it fucking going down a path of really bad shit. Absolutely. Agreed. YouTube. We can't change what you're allowed to say. You have to be able to speak whatever you want, and that includes dumb idiot Nazis or whatever. <laughs> you, you just have to put up with that shit. I agree. I also agree that Taylor's a bitch. Taylor's a bitch. Taylor's a bitch, Chase. You We're know free to say that. That this fictional character... She's free to be a bitch. <laughs> but it doesn't change the fact that she's a bitch. And, yeah, and we it's can her say American that. Right. It's her American right to be a bitch, and it's everyone else's American right to be offended by it. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think we need to talk any more about this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it wraps itself up in some shitty, lame way. Who cares? Yeah, a completely unbelievable, like, cafeteria scene at the school. Why does her mom drop her off at school at lunchtime? <laughs> Did you catch that? <laughs> she was like, are you sure you need to go back in there, honey? She's like, I gotta do this. Yeah, it's really hard going right back to lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, she, she never gave her daughter the tranquilizers, and she woke up at noon that day. <laughs> <laughs> really really brave of Taylor to try to figure out if she wants chicken nuggets or pizza. Fucking bitch. <laughs> Stop hinkling it. <laughs> Such a Again, hinkle bastard. Everybody in this movie was an asshole. Including Taylor. Including David. I wasn't in the movie. <laughs> well, you're an asshole right now. Let's be clear, I was not in this flick. So, to sum up, have you learned your lesson? Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> do you we see what you do when you, you call me David. the fish? Do you see what you've done? You you, you, you hurt made feelings, me, You made David. me sit through this fucking movie because I call you the fish? I, I nearly killed myself. <laughs> you need to fucking swim upstream, baby. Just let it pass. <laughs> I'm going to change the laws and get you fucking raped. <laughs> you going to take it to your you senator? take him to court. <laughs> he called me the fish. Uh, dismissed. We're not doing this. <laughs> he belongs in Tent City. <laughs> Put the pink oh undies on God. him. <laughs> he needs a three-foot black dick in him at all times. <laughs> he called me a fish. I lost Stacy there. Like, oh my god, three foot black dick. Apparently, calling somebody a fish is very offensive. Very offensive. Very. And, and fuck. You make racist threats at him. Yeah, is <laughs> <He's> a racist? <laughs> like it's more awful because it's a black dick. Well, to David because he's a racist. <laughs> what? Uh, okay, sure. Yeah, just Chase. rationalize it that way. Yeah. Well, you didn't hear what he was saying before we hit record. Anybody's three foot penis would be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> would you rather take a three foot penis or? <laughs> I didn't say it was a black guy's dick anyway. I just said that the dick was black. Yeah, it could have been a a black penis on a white dude. You know, you don't know. Yeah, he might have like slipped into a tar pit, pelvis down, and never really cleaned it off. And he just happened to have a huge dick. Or he had a surgery, a dick transplant. He wanted yeah. a black dick. Or just yeah, like a sharpie. Done that? He had a he had a transplant or he went to a plastic surgeon. He was like, uh, black it up, doc. And he did. <laughs> just like Bugs Bunny. 
<laughs> Black it up, dog. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I think that was recently that there was a successful penis tra- transplant, actually. The guy yep. got a whole new dick. Yeah. <laughs> cool. What happened to the guy that gave him the dick? <laughs> I, I don't know. It might have been a prosthetic dick. He oh. lost. He lost his dick, and uh, I think I think it was. It's not a, a transplant if it's prosthetic. Yeah, uh, then that's that's just a a prosthetic dick. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good point. I don't think that's a, a a a what's the word I'm, phrase I'm looking for? That's, that's not a that's not a mar, modern Mod- marvel of science. Just taking like a funnel with a hole at the end of it and be like, we put it on him, yay. Like, well, it was like flesh. I don't know. I guess I'll have to read it again. But no, I think I think I did hear about this too, where it was like a successful functioning dick tla- transplant. Yeah. But they yeah, were still they were still just like like moral boundaries. They couldn't transplant the testicles. <laughs> they just put fake balls in there. Yeah, David is part of the dick surgery newsletter. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's just waiting for those uh, advances in science so he can get an upgrade. Dicks and Dicks Weekly. That's that's what I subscribe to. <laughs> I hope there's some uh, some girthy black ones on the market. <laughs> David, why well, you got to bring race into this? It's for my transplant, Chase. You got me thinking. This is like a white guy with a black paint. No. <laughs> <laughs> you would be a really famous porn star if that was your gimmick. Uh, Yeah, that <laughs> I'm sure, like, for at least a year, I'd have a string of videos until people got tired of it. Just like, uh, old, <laughs> I didn't mean you specifically, but <laughs> old white guy, black dick over your here. dick with a hammer and it turned black. I could see the porn plot being like, uh, no, I don't fuck white guys. Well, baby, <laughs> I got news for you. <laughs> I don't got time for white guy. dick. <laughs> well, <laughs> just some girl. Just like, you're cute and all, but I've always wanted some black dick in me. Zip. New topic. Would you rather? Would you rather have to wear a shirt with a current close-up of your naked crotch every day forever? (laughs) (laughs) I'm there. (laughs) Or you have chronic butt and crotch acne. (laughs) <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, I don't have any questions. No, like the the chronic <laughs> genital ac- acne sounds horrible. Yeah, first off, horrible. I'd immediately seal the deal with you and uh, get married so that you can't back out of that shit. <laughs> Fair. And then I'd wear that shirt every day, baby. I would just have to hope that my wife would see that shirt and go, "Yeah." <laughs> It just otherwise, gets her going every time. Yeah, otherwise, I'd, you know, I'd scour the land. There'd be there'd be that one. There'd be that one person that was just like, oh, and be like, yeah, all right, Whoa, here Whoa, is are. that your flaccid penis? <laughs> like, that's mine. <laughs> yeah, like, here, take a look. Spit an image, right? What, I'm not allowed to be hard? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I, no, not in the <laughs> shirt. It's got to be tasteful. But how are you going to even see it? <laughs> Sometimes it's not going to be flattering. This is an everyday thing. Like, if you've got something going on down there... Like, maybe you do have acne a little bit sometimes. Are they going to see how square my balls are, too? Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you got some square-ass balls. And, you know, what what condition are my genital, genitals going to be in? Like, For, uh, acne. <laughs> just everybody knows what's going on with you. Okay, yeah. But, like, it's going to be, like, a, a direct representation of the day-to-day, right? Like it's not gonna be some nobody's skewed. gonna buy pants for me now. <laughs> <laughs> Take it from these balls. Those pants are awesome. This is what Ex- your dick could look like comfortably in our pants. <laughs> Hi, hello. Can I help you? Uh, w- why do you have a picture of dick and balls on your shirt? Glad you asked. Are you tired of your dick and balls being smashed up by modern chinos? Try our new dick and balls breathable chinos. <laughs> Look how happy it makes my dick. <laughs> it's like my dick is smiling. That wrinkle right there is a smile. See it? That's Sir, smile. that's a frown. I can recognize a frown when I see a dick frown. <laughs> <laughs> well, then get out. How about that? <laughs> it's crying. 
<laughs> no, I 100%, 100% would take the, yeah, you can see my shit. All right. I, I mean, I guess it's a little bit more of a problem for me as a girl because once a month, everybody's going to be knowing when it's a fucking massacre down there. Oh, wait a minute. So the shirt is organic? Like it changes it's printed like day every day? day? Yeah. Yeah, Based it, on it, your, <laughs> it's up to date <laughs> every day. <laughs> there's what? like one dick selfie. Well, I don't, per think, day. There's, I don't think there's. I don't think there's ever wear a coat. Hmm. I wear a coat now. Nobody can no, see it. No, nope. You're not allowed. If you wear a coat, it has to be open. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I've ever <laughs> had like a day where I look down at my genitals and I'm like, "That's exceptional. Look like that every day, please." <laughs> so like. <laughs> And what what are the print? When does the snapshot happen? Like when is when is the dick snapshot? Do you know, or is it just at random? Like, do you have time to prep for it? It's at the coldest point in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it is not flattering. <laughs> so like it would consistently suck every day, right? Um, maybe it would it would be mixed up. You you wouldn't really see it coming. It's it's not like you get to take the picture and you get to like choose the lighting and all that. You just see the crevice where your dick has sucked into itself like a belly button. <laughs> just sitting on the train like, yeah, it's my dick today. It's an any. <laughs> you know, I still stand by that though cuz I used to have acne on my face in my teenage years and god that sucked. It was just like annoying and always there and bothersome. I couldn't imagine having yeah, like you looked horrible. I'm, I'm not saying about looks, just like <laughs> even just like the feel of it. Oh, like no, having I that. I like, saw you though, but and you looked horrible. I lucked out in high school, and you're I, a I didn't. Bitch, Chase, <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a nasty slut. I can smell your crabs. <laughs> oh, watch out, Chase! He's gonna make a video of you. I just got He's cyber bullied. <laughs> <laughs> I just got cyber bullied by a crab infested slut. <laughs> yeah. You, you, bathe, and you bathe in a sauna of herpes. <laughs> God, I can't believe I'm getting bullied. Pets. I'm getting bullied by this huge slut cunt. God. <laughs> I have an aquarium full of my crabs. I bet you do, because you're a terrible, trashy <laughs> slut whore. God, I'm being bullied. I call them sea monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> I lost track. What are we talking about here? What's going on? Oh, we're just wrapping up this Would You Rather. All right. So speaking of Would You Rathers, I was on my way home from work a few days ago, and Del Taco, of all establishments, had a commercial that had a Would You Rather on there. And they've done this before. They've done it before, and like I've heard them, and I, I wish I could think of the examples because they're usually really dumb. But there was one. Would you that... rather eat Del Taco or have a picture of your penis? <laughs> eat Del Taco. Eat Del I'll Taco. Eat, I'll, I'll eat Del Taco. I would. I would like to say our 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 Taco Tuesday excursions when we made like like super tacos. That was pretty sweet. It's yeah, pretty sweet. A little ketchup. Yeah, I don't know why you're the only that. maniac that puts ketchup on tacos. But um, sociopath. So. <laughs> Del Taco, their commercial comes on, and I'm stuck in traffic, and I hear it, and it's like, Del Taco wants to know, would you rather have an incredible sense of taste, or would you rather have an incredible sense of smell? And both sound terrible. I can't remember their exact phrasing. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, I farted, but it was quiet. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Great, now I gotta deal with that shit. God. I was hoping it'd be loud. Yeah, Yeah, everyone wants to hear that. (laughs) I can't remember the exact phrasing of it, but it's like basically just like the most incredible sense of smell or just like the finest tuned sense of taste ever, which they both sound like they'd suck. Like, honestly, yeah. I don't think you can win in that deal, because if you have like an amazing sense of smell, you're going to pick up everything else around you. Like, how the yeah, fuck good. would you know? Well, you Chase, no I used, smell. He smelled I, once in his life. Yeah. But think about it. Like if your if your sense of smell was amplified by a hundred, yeah, you're gonna smell the terrible Del Taco in front of you, and then that terrible <laughs> Del Taco bathroom, the terrible dumpster outside the Del Taco, that cranking it homeless man next to that dumpster outside of Del Taco, that beat up Studebaker outside of Del Taco with that shitty family of four back there. One of the children has a shitty diaper. You're gonna smell that too, Siddharth. Yeah, I don't want that. Yeah, and I don't want an incredible sense of taste because. Yeah. And on the like, flip side, on the flip side, like you, you don't okay. You've got like a standard scent, 
sense of smell, that's cool. But if your taste is amplified, you're going to taste like the shit particles on that cook's glove. Because, <laughs> you know. <laughs> because apparently he was wiping his ass with his cooking gloves on and then just went right back to it. Well, no, he's in this building if where somebody to took choose, a nasty shit. If you had to choose, taste is the obvious choice because you have way more control about what you taste than what you smell. Yeah, that's true. I I just... I feel like that would make you maybe more picky about what you eat. You'd enjoy less food. And if you like, if you have a super heightened sense of smell, if if you've got like a super (laughs) heightened sense of smell, that plays into your sense of taste as well. So you're kind of getting both in there. So if you can smell everything really, really well, you're also going to taste things really well too. So you're going to be smelling shit and tasting shit, and you know, I'd rather go with the heightened sense of taste. Because then I won't be able to smell anything. And then to your point, yeah, I can yeah, cater what I eat to my tastes. And I can experience and make it work. Have you lived longer with smell or without smell? I am just about to hit the halfway point. So <laughs> it's been just under half of my life I have not had a sense of smell. You don't remember. I do remember, Siddharth. I get like phantom sense when I walk into places. I'm like, ah, I remember what you smelled like. Phantom sense. Yeah. (laughs) Either way, it sounds terrible. I don't want my sense of smell back. Ever. The real terrible part is Del Taco. (laughs) (laughs) But man, when it's 2 a.m. and you're drunk and somebody's willing to take you there, it's a great option. Sure. Yeah. Del Taco. It's better than nothing. (laughs) (laughs) So I guess we have all landed on uh, crotch selfie shirts. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I guess I land on that, too. I don't I don't I don't want to deal with no chronic button crotch acne. Sounds pretty terrible. I don't want craters on my dick. (laughs) I mean, even even when I was in high school, like there were times where like my facial acne, it just like it hurt. Like it just sucked. Like if. If I haven't just like rubbed my hand across my face and hit like the wrong patch, I was like, ah, like it stung. I don't want that on my ass and balls and shit. Like, that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, I felt bad for the smooth. kids with that problem. You're not going to fuck with that smooth dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. My, my shit quattro. Is that what you use, Chase? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I use the one with 19 blades. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess the crotch selfies would force you to kind of groom yourself a little bit more uh excessively and my dick would learn how to smile yeah i, I just <laughs> smile I, for the picture <laughs> i'd get like, like the the world's like greatest hedge clipper in there and do designs <laughs> <laughs> like it'd be a spectacle people would be like what's david's dick look like today his pubes are in the shape of a big d wow <laughs> he's got the mickey mouse ears he must have gone to disney <laughs> It looks like a little elephant. <laughs> a really uh, little elephant. A, t- a tiny little elephant. <laughs> New topic. Goodbye now. Goodbye. We had a lot of laughs. Wait, Siddharth, no. A lot of fun. <laughs> on the jank. Today. We're glad you've joined us. And you're here. Even though David fucking blows. That's me. This has been the Jackass Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we talked a lot about uh, a shitty movie that... Do you, th- do you think they should watch it even? No. I can't... Like, watch like the first hour and what? then tune out because it gets so shitty after that. I mean, like, even Stitches, I didn't think it was a great movie, but it's still worth watching, and it was fun talking about it. I didn't yeah. enjoy watching this movie. I didn't particularly enjoy talking about it. Like, it just sucked altogether. Well, there's some silly shit that's worth... Yeah, It's not worth an hour and a half of anybody's time, I can tell you that much. It really stretches on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we talked about... Uh, who cares? We're going to be done now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you well, for supporting us, everybody. Yeah, thank you, Jank Holes. Thanks for janking off with us. Um, and, and David has learned his lesson and will never call me the fish again because that is cyberbullying. 
<laughs> nope. <laughs> We've learned a lot of lessons about cyber bully. We've learned that David is a fucking bully. (laughs) And an asshole. And a piece of shit. And a dick. And a douche. Goodbye. We're done now. Cue the butts. Cue the butts. Cue the butts. Butts. I'm ready to go to sleep now. Thank you. Butts. 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 of herpes sludge sludge and herpes and the clap with little crabs crawling on the rim secretions from your genitals in that bucket there